Hi everyone, welcome to this lesson where today we're talking about medians and altitudes. Usually this lesson is taught right after we talk about perpendicular bisectors and angle bisectors of triangles, and now we've got medians and altitudes of triangles. So let's take a look. We've got some new vocabulary here, some things we know, but a lot of things that we don't know just yet. So first of all, a median is a segment that connects the vertex with the midpoint of the opposite side. So when you're constructing a median in a triangle, you're taking the vertex of a triangle, there's three of them, so pick any vertex, and you're basically drawing a segment that connects that vertex to the midpoint of the opposite side. And when you do that all three times, those three medians are going to intersect at what's called the centroid. So that's my next term here. So the centroid is the name of the point of concurrency. So that's where all three lines meet, all three medians meet. And we have what's called a centroid theorem. And the centroid theorem is that the distance from the vertex to the centroid, okay, so where all three medians meet, is two-thirds of the entire median length, which is pretty cool. And we're going to be doing some math really soon in order to figure that out. If I asked you to calculate the midpoint, the centroid, excuse me, on a graph, so let's say I gave you three ordered pairs and you were to plot those three points, you would have to first calculate the midpoints of two sides of your triangles. So you would go ahead and do that. You could do all three, but two is really the necessary uh, problem. Then step two, you'd have to write the equations of the lines from that midpoint to the opposite vertex. So you'd have to go ahead and calculate the equation of the line that goes from the median, okay, that it connects the median basically, which is the midpoint of one side to a vertex, and you'd have to do that twice. Then you'd have to take those equations and basically see where they intersect. So using substitution or elimination or just even graphically solving that system, you would need to see where they intersect. And then where they intersect um, would be where the centroid is, whatever that coordinate point is. So we're gonna take a look. Now with a median, remember, a median means you are working with, and I'm just gonna draw right here on my screen, um, you are dealing with congruent segments. Okay, so medians are congruent segments, and then you also have this two-thirds theorem. So we have two special things going on here. So if I was to draw here, a centroid is where medians meet. So this is the midpoint of segment AB, and notice that is connected to point C. Then if I went over here, segment BC is bisected. This is the midpoint, and it's connected to A. And then I could go ahead and bisect AC, and so then this is the midpoint and it's connected to B. And where these three medians meet is called the centroid. And that two thirds theorem, you guys, means that this little segment here is worth two thirds of the entire length. And this segment here from the centroid to the side of the triangle, that part of the median is only worth, third, worth one third of the segment. So you have a lot of relationships going on here. Obviously the entire median would be three thirds, which is one whole. Notice that two thirds is double one third. So if I give you this two-thirds length and I ask you to calculate this little length here, you really are just taking half of it. If I give you the one-third length and I ask you to calculate the two-thirds length, then you would just be doubling it. So you have a really good, easy um, relationship going on there. So here it says point D is the centroid of triangle ABC. This is just like the previous diagram. So BE is congruent to AE. AF is congruent to FC, and CG is congruent to BG. The distance from the centroid to the vertex is two thirds the entire median. So there's a couple different ways we can describe, um, you know, these lengths and how we can calculate it. So AD, I would say AD, so it's from the vertex to the median, is worth two thirds of AG. Another thing you could say is AD is equal to twice DG. Okay, so if AD is worth two thirds, then DG is worth one third. And so AD would be equal to two times DG. So that would be another way to represent it. And for all of these, there are definitely more than one way to represent it. DG is worth one third of AG. Or I could say DG is half of AD. So that's another option. ED is one third of EC. So the entire length of EC, that little ED from the side to the centroid is only worth one third, whereas DC, that's the length that is worth two thirds of EC. 
And the last one, BD, okay, from the vertex to the centroid, that is two thirds of BF. And therefore DF is worth one third of BF. Okay. Now the centroid is always in the interior of a triangle. So I'm going to make some really just general sketches here, guys. I want you to imagine that I'm perfectly connecting my midpoints of each side to the opposite. And even with just a sketch, what we're going to see is that the centroid is always going to be in the interior. So no matter what, when I go ahead and I bisect each side, okay, and I connect it to the opposite vertex and I construct my medians, the centroid is always going to be in the interior. All right, doesn't matter if it's an acute triangle, a right triangle, an obtuse triangle. If you are connecting a vertex to the opposite interior, I'm sorry, opposite side, then that centroid will always be in the interior. Okay, the angle bisectors also had that same thing. So angle bisectors meet at the in center and the in center is always in the interior of the triangle. Okay, altitudes. Altitude is the last type of special relationship that we're going to talk about within a triangle. An altitude is a segment from a vertex to the line containing the opposite side and is perpendicular. Altitude is the height of the triangle, and a triangle has three sides. So technically, we can calculate three separate altitudes, depending on what side we're calculating the altitude from. And the altitude is the segment from a vertex to the line containing the opposite side, and it's always at a perpendicular. And that's what we need to know. When you're constructing an altitude, you're always working with right angles. Okay, We're not bisecting any angle. We're not bisecting any side. We're simply just constructing a perpendicular line from the vertex to the opposite side of the triangle. The orthocenter is what we call the point where all the altitudes intersect each other, okay? So again, altitudes intersect at the orthocenter. Now, if we were to actually calculate the orthocenter on a graph, you would have to follow these three steps. You would need to take two or three sides of the triangle, and you would have to calculate the slope of the triangle, and then find the negative reciprocal, okay? The negative reciprocal slopes, because we want to construct a perpendicular line to it. We would then have to find the equation of the line using that perpendicular slope and the vertex of the opposite side. So you'd have to take a triangle, you'd have to calculate what's the perpendicular slope of that um, side of the triangle, and then write the equation of the line using that perpendicular slope and the opposite point of the triangle. And you'd have to do that twice. And then once you have those two lines, you would then need to set them up as a system of equations and solve that equation. So a little bit of a process for sure, but it's actually just a lot of old algebra one skills that get brought back in. So when you are looking at an altitude, guys, you're really just working, talking about right angles. Okay, right angles. That's entirely what altitudes are. So you can see I have the altitude of um, from A. It is created at a perpendicular um, from point A to the opposite side. Okay, also point B set up as a perpendicular to the opposite side. Point C set up as a perpendicular line. Uh, to the opposite side. So we're not bisecting any sides. I'm not marking anything congruent. I just have these three right angles and where the three um, perpendiculars meet is called the orthocenter. So now it says point D is the orthocenter of triangle ABC. And so if this is the orthocenter, it means that these are all right angles. And so triangle AED okay, which is a right angle, um, is obviously going to be congruent to angle BED, which these are all going to then just technically be congruent to each other, you guys. CFD is congruent to angle AFD, which this is also congruent to this angle. They're just all right angles that are created, and that's really just the point here. So you have just a ton of right angles. Okay. The orthocenter can be in the interior or exterior or on the side of a triangle. So orthocenter. So if I was to construct, and I'm going to use my line segment tool here to just construct these right angles. Uh, that looks good. Let me just change my color to red. So constructing this would be a perpendicular. From this point to the opposite side, that looks about my perpendicular. And again, I'm just, you know, eyeballing this right now. 
Okay, if I was to connect all of those in this acute triangle, and I make all these right angles, I can see my ortho center is definitely in the interior. Okay, so now if I go ahead for this right triangle, and I construct a perpendicular here from this vertex to the opposite side. Now this vertex to the opposite side, you're gonna see is actually the leg of the right triangle. And this vertex to the opposite side, you're gonna see actually creates a perpendicular um, with the other leg of the right triangle. So in a right triangle, what we're gonna see is that the ortho center is actually on the side of the triangle and not only just the side, but actually the vertex, it's on the triangle. Whereas if we look at the last one, an obtuse triangle, and I'm gonna pull up my um, triangle, my sides here. This one's a little tougher to do, is I have to take the vertex to the opposite side, so that's easy there, that's my right angle. This one, I would say if I had to construct the perpendicular to the opposite side, we're actually gonna see that it's gonna be like floating here. Let me move this. Okay, if I was to construct my perpendicular. So then I'm gonna move my word here. And then if I was to construct my perpendicular from this point to this opposite side, it would be about here. So in this case, the ortho center is actually on the exterior of the triangle, which looks kind of funky, but that's what happens. And notice here, and I didn't mark it up, that it's like if I extended this line here, then that's my 90 degree angle. If I extended this side of the triangle here, that's my 90 degree angle, and that's why they intersect at the top there, which looks pretty funky. I hope this video was helpful for you. Thank you so much for watching.